हाई फ्रेंड्स आई एम एडवोकेट नमीश निगोतिया एंड यू आर वॉचिंग माई यूट्यूब चैनल लीगल एडवाइस फॉर एवरी वन फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस दैट वॉट इज एन बेल एप्लीकेशन वॉट आर्ग्यूमेंट शुड बी एडवांस बाई अ काउंसिल वाइल आर्ग्यूइंग द बेल एप्लीकेशन बिफोर द ऑनरेबल कोर्ट वाइल आर्ग्यूइंग फोर थर्टी सेवन एंड फोर थर्टी नाइन ऑफ द कोड ऑफ क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर बिफोर आई स्टार्ट वीडियो आई वुड लाइक टू मेक सम क्यूट एज हेल्ड बाई द ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट बेल इज अ रूल एंड जेल इज एन एक्सेप्शन and this verdict has been given in AIR 1977 page number 2447 the citation is state of rajasthan versus balchand allies balia in this case honorable supreme court has held that bail is a right of the accused and bail is a rule and rejection or jail is an exception but how this power should be exercised is this power should be exercised in a judicial manner yes Honorable Supreme Court again in Ram Govind Upadhyay versus Sudarshan Singh reported in SCC 2002 3 SCC page number 598 held that ground of bail grant of bail is a discretion of a judge but this discretion should be exercised in a judicial manner and not in a whimsical or hasty manner now the question is how should we argue the bail application so if it is a bail in non bailable offense or it is a bail under bailable offense if it is a bailable offense we have to move an application under section 436 of the code of criminal procedure and you do not require to make arguments in the application you just only require to submit the bail application along with the documents but if it is an application under section 437 or 439 or 438 of the code of criminal procedure the counsel required to argue the arguments argue the bail application satisfied the judge and thereafter only can the bail application can be allowed by the honorable court now the question arises what should be the main points of arguments friends the main points of argument should be that accused is not involved in the alleged offense the accused has not done anything and totally false allegations has been imposed by the prosecution upon the accused and prosecution and complainant is having connivance and there is a malafide on the part of the prosecution and complainant then delay in fir if it is delay in fir by the complainant it is a good ground of arguments in the bail application and court generally used to consider this aspect and grant the benefit of the bail to the accused person in this respect i would like to quote one famous judgment of honorable delhi high court the citation is prashant kumar singh versus state and it has been it has been decided on 15th of june 2018 it was a case of 376 of the indian penal code an inordinate delay has been done by the complainant while launching the fir so honorable delhi high court says that if it is an inordinate delay the accused should be given benefit of bail then other ground should be that civil if supposedly civil suit is pending before the complainant and the applicant accused and complainant has filed launch and first information report before the police station then pendency of civil suit is also a very good ground to obtain the bail then you have to argue that lordship the civil suit is already pending and just uh, to harass the accused applicant the present first information report has been filed actually it is a civil dispute and a color a criminal color has been given by the complainant along with connivance with the prosecution or police or investigation officer then other ground should be if it is a regular bail then charge sheet has been filed if the prosecution has filed the charge sheet and accused is continuously is in jail the counsel before arguing should go through the charge sheet and take important notes from the charge sheet study thoroughly all the documents statements of the witnesses and argue so after filing charge sheet there is a bright chance that the accused can be released on bail and another grounds can be the period of custody period of custody if the period of custody is sufficient supposingly the offense is punishable total period of 7 years imprisonment and a sufficient time has already been undergone and the accused is in jail so it's also a good ground to grant the bail and while argue, arguments the counsel should make submission that the total punishable offense is 7 years 
and the accused is already in custody since last say two years three years so lordship may please to grant the bail application another important aspect is previous criminal record we call it antecedent if the accused is not having antecedent and it is a first offense honorable courts while granting the bail generally used to consider this aspect if he is having so many criminal records many fir many cases already pending so it is difficult at that time to obtain bail but if it is a first offense and uh, and uh, uh, there is no antecedent or criminal record then the counsel should argue that lordship it is a first offense false allegation has been imposed by the prosecution the accused applicant is not involved in the offense and more importantly the counsel should argue that the there is no criminal record of the accused applicant accused has never involved in any sort of offenses before in any court and no fir has been registered except this fir as against the accused as against the accused so the accused should be given the benefit of the bail so if there is no antecedents it can be a very good ground to obtain bail and doctrine of parity what is doctrine of parity if the honorable judge in the similar facts and circumstances given a benefit of bail to other person then the counsel can argue that lordship has already given benefit of bail in a similar facts and circumstances to the other person so as per the principle of doctrine of parity the lordship may please to allow this bail application and doctrine of parity is generally and usually considered by the honorable court while allowing the bail application one caution has to be done that uh, the earlier judgments in which the lordship has already granted the benefit of the bail in the similar case in the similar circumstances the certified copy of that order or judgment should be produced while arguing the bail application similarly uh if a co accused in a same case in a same fir has already been enlarged or on bail and both accused are similarly situated persons it is also a good good ground to obtain the bail the counsel has to argue that lordship has already granted bail of the co accused and both are similarly situated persons so the applicant should also be enlarged on bail or given the benefit of the bail there are many cases in which injury report or medical record is very important so the accused should obtain the injury report and if it is there is no serious injury it can also be a ground of bail that the false allegation has been imposed and there is no serious injury upon the complainant should so the applicant accused should be given the benefit of the bail and the statements recorded under section 161 crpc is also having relevance if there is no statement as against the accused or there are some statements in favor of the accused then it should also be argued by the counsel that please see the witness, independent witnesses has been examined by the prosecution by the investigation officer and there is nothing against the accused and if the complainant is a habitual litigant so it can also be a ground of bail so in this video we have discussed that what should be the arguments and grounds of bail this video is end thank you so much friends